untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono-white combo deck featuring the one and only Oswald Fiddlebender, a 2-mana 2-2 two -two legendary gnome artificer, can pay white mana and tap it to sacrifice an artifact and then search your library for an artifact card with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrificed artifact's mana value and put it straight onto the battlefield. So Fiddlebender is gonna lead to a pretty fun artifact combo deck whose main goal is eventually to get a Paradox Engine in play. The 5-mana legendary artifact says whenever we can the spell, untap all non-land permanents you control, that includes Fiddlebender, so we can potentially untap Fiddlebender multiple times in the same turn to use the ability, get more artifacts in play, and then we can combo off using perhaps an Aetherflux Reservoir, which says whenever we cast a spell we gain one life for each spell we've cast this turn, and we can pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to any target, and then we can maybe combine it with an Ancestral Statue, a 4-mana 3-4, that when it enters a battlefield lets us return a non-land permanent we control to its owner's hand. It doesn't say another non-land permanent, so we can just keep picking up our ancestral statue over and over again, and as long as we have some mana producing artifacts that we can untap with our paradox engine, we can keep making mana, replaying our ancestral statue, gaining life with our reservoir, and eventually combo kill the opponent. So that's the goal of the deck. Of course we've got plenty of other artifact synergies to go around in case the combo game plan doesn't pan out. So starting out at zero mana, we've got Mox Amber, the legendary artifact makes one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control, so perfect alongside Fiddlebender. Then we've got Jerry's Resolve, we've got a few ways to untap Fiddlebender, and a one mana instant is perfect, letting us potentially use Fiddlebender's ability right away in the same turn. Then we also have Esper Sentinel as a 1-1 artifact creature that can potentially draw cards or tax the opponent. We've got God's Willing as a 1-mana instant to protect Fiddlebender from removal, so sometimes it's better to wait a turn on playing Fiddlebender so we can play it with protection. Then Portable Hole gives us cheap removal, also an artifact we can sacrifice. We've got Selfless Savior as a 1-drop we can play to protect Fiddlebender on turn 2. We've got Slayer's Bounty as the new legendary artifact from Alchemy that when it enters the battlefield lets us take a look at all creature cards from the opponent's hand and when we sacrifice a bounty or another clue we can draft a card from the spellbook so we'll get three options between these 15 different cards that we get to choose from and then put one of them into our hand and then we can also sacrifice the bounty to draw a card as it basically acts like a clue. Then we've got Swords to Plowshares as a staple in any white historic brawl deck as removal. Wings of the Cosmos, another way to untap Fiddlebender. And Terrarion can be sacrificed to fix our mana, or can also be sacrificed to Fiddlebender and will still draw a card in the process. Then at 2 mana we've got Puzzle Knot, making a 1-1 servo, can sacrifice it to Fiddlebender or make another servo. We've got the Barbed Spike, which leaves behind a 1-1 Flying Thopter token. We've got Glass Casket as more interaction. Ingenious Smith can search up an artifact in the top cards and can grow the more artifacts we play. We've got Potion of Healing, drawing a card can be sacrificed to Fiddlebender or to gain 3 life. Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol and Mindstone as 2 mana ramp cards to speed up our mana acceleration. Then we've got a couple more artifacts that we don't mind sacrificing as they essentially draw a card when they enter the battlefield or when they get sacrificed. Between Golden Egg we've got the Guild Globe, which is very similar, can also fix our mana if we need to transform some of the colorless mana into white mana to use Fiddlebender's ability. Acre Wellspring, a nice one to play and then sacrifice to draw a couple cards. Then we've got Mirror Shield as an artifact equipment that can protect Fiddlebender by giving it Hexproof. Ornithopter of Paradise, another mana creature. And then we've got Prophetic Prism and Spare Supplies, which can draw more cards and we don't mind sacrificing. Then at 3 mana you'll notice plenty of mana artifacts, but most importantly these are mana artifacts that can produce white mana, so we can play them on turn 3 and then use Fiddlebender right away to search up a 4 mana artifact. So we've got Altar of the Pantheon, Chromatic Lantern, Cultivator's Caravan, Dragon's Horde, then moving on Heraldic Banner, We've got the Honored Heirloom, which can also act as Graveyard Hate, Letter of Acceptance, Mana Geode, lets us cry one when it enters, Manalith, Replicating Ring, and 
Then we've got Skyclave Relic, which we can also kick to make additional mana. And the Celestus, which introduces the day and night cycle. So plenty of these three mana artifacts that make mana to potentially get a four drop in play on turn three. Then taking a look at some other three drops, Filigree Familiar, a creature that can provide value when it enters the battlefield and when it gets sacrificed. Then we've got Palladio Mirror to potentially make two mana if it survives. The Wand can be sacrificed to deal five damage to any target, giving us a bit of removal. Sculpting Steel can copy any artifact in play. Then Spinning Wheel, I think I skipped over, another three mana ramp artifact, can also tap a creature down. And then a Workshop Assistant, if it dies, can return an artifact from our graveyard to our hand, if the opponent can somehow deal with our important combo pieces. Then at 4 mana we already mentioned Aetherflux Reservoir, Ancestral Statue, and then another nice one is Mystic Forge. The 4 mana artifact lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can cast artifact spells and colorless spells from the top of our library, and then we can even tap it, pay 1 life to exile the top card of our library, so that can potentially let us cast a ton of spells off the top of our deck, given that almost our entire deck is artifacts, and then we can also combine it with our Paradox Engine to potentially get rid of lands off the top of our deck, and then untap it to keep using the ability and be more likely to find more spells on top. Then some other 4 drops include more ramp artifacts with Firemind Vessel making 2 mana of different colors, as well as the new Key to the Archive, which lets us draft a card from the 15 card spellbook, which includes some very powerful options, and then can tap to make 2 mana of any color we want, usually gonna be white, but every now and then we might make colors to cast those cards from the spellbook. And then we've got Solemn Simulacrum, which can be sacrificed and draws a card and ramps us in the process. Panharmonicon can potentially double the effects of artifacts that enter the battlefield, and we've got a ton of those that can draw cards or generate some tokens. And then Hedron Archive, another ramp artifact making two colorless mana, can also be sacrificed to draw two cards. Then at five mana besides Paradox Engine, we've got the Mishra's Self Replicator, which can make copies of itself if we have extra mana to pay whenever we cast a historic spell, which includes all our artifacts. Then we've got Gilded Lotus as another ramp artifact, making three mana of any one color. And Cataclysmic Gearhulk can potentially be a reset button and a pseudo sweeper by making each player sacrifice a bunch of permanents. Then at six mana, we've got the Dreamstone Hedron as another way to make mana. The God Pharaoh statue to tax the opponent if we can ramp it out can be quite effective. And the Immortal Sun to shut down any planeswalkers, draws extra cards, and discount some of our spells. And then our mana base includes 33 basic planes and a couple utility lands with Buried Rune, returning artifacts from our graveyard. We've got Crawling Barons as a creature land, which can also be an alternate win condition. Field of Rune to deal with opposing lands. We've got Inventor's Fair, which can be sacrificed to search up any artifact. And then Radiant Fountain gains a little bit of life. And Treasure Vault also counts as an artifact, can potentially sacrifice it to Fiddlebender to search up a one-man artifact and start a chain. And then Zalfran Void can also scry one when it enters the battlefield. So yeah, a very nice combo deck and hopefully we'll get to see it in action here. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Cody deck. So it should be a good matchup for Asper Sentinel, as our opponent's going to cast lots of non-creature spells. And then hopefully that helps us pick up a third lane to start casting some of our artifacts. Land is good. So I can play Fiddlebender if they kill it, so be it. If not, next turn we can already search up a 4 drop and start ramping. Excellent, so attack with the Sentinel. And then probably no use in scrying if we're gonna shuffle our deck. And which 4 drop do I want to get? Probably something that makes mana. And that's not too easy to interact with. So Firemind Vessel... Or we could go for Key to the Archive. And here... Kind of liking Putrefy. And get rid of... Statue, perhaps. Even though just hardcasting Statue wouldn't be bad. Yeah, it's close. Gilded Load is quite powerful if we can combine it with Paradox Engine. So we could Putrefy Cody if we wanted to. 
or we could try and get Paradox Engine going instead. Which would involve, let's see, make two mana, get Paradox Engine, and then would be nice to have some mana to work with. So maybe we actually start with Gilded Lotus, tap this for whites, get the Paradox Engine, and then I can use Wings of the Cosmos as well. And probably no point in going full control, given that I uh, cannot use Phil Bender at instant speed here, so this is fine. So, can make a little bit more mana, use Fiddle Bender, get a 2 drop perhaps. And Acre Wellspring is always a solid pick. And then go for Mana Geode. Scry. Double tapping Q floats all our mana. Make a bunch of whites. And now we're looking to get a 4 drop and then enough mana. So for now, probably still sacking Wellspring. So I can get an extra mana artifact. And uh, let's see here. Sculpting Steel can copy Gilded Lotus, make more mana. Can even go for Reservoir. And then double tap Q again, float a bunch of mana. And now we're going to get our statue. And we should be able to combo off here. Statue picks up itself. Can replay it. And we already have the Reservoir. So... We can essentially gain infinite life and eventually use Reservoir to deal 50 to our opponent. So yeah, pretty nice combo turn here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Zakama, Primal Calamity, Dinosaur Ramp deck. So don't expect too much interaction, in which case the Sand should be fine. Also have Ingenious Smith as an alternate win condition here. So do I want to play Fiddlebender on two? Not too much removal they can have here at instant speed to kill it. So I think it's worth a shot. Next turn maybe go for Wellspring. And then don't mind the planes on top that we can draw into here. Alright, that works. If they had a burn spell, we could have also used Jerus Resolve to uh, save Fiddlebender for what it's worth. But now I'm happy drawing the planes and then getting a 3 mana a ramp artifact of some sort. Could go for. The Palladium Mirror, which adds the most mana, but of course a little bit more vulnerable to a potential sweeper from the opponent. So I think we'll play it safe. Maybe get like a Mana Geode, which also lets us cry. Yeah, it seems fine. And then I'll even have to discard to hand size, as the Wellspring has drawn us too many cards. Statue, probably not a card we need to draw. Can still cast a resolve, but wouldn't have enough mana to use Fiddlebender, but still nice to protect him. And then, what do I get rid of here? Maybe a Cold Steel Heart. Spare Supplies is a little bit nicer to sacrifice to Fiddlebender. Alright, opponent's got Solemn to ramp. Get that green mana, presumably. Opponent seems to be playing Snowlands. Still has a basic planes in there for I'm not sure what reason. Field of the Dead no longer a thing we have to worry about, which was the main reason to kind of diversify regular basics and snow basics, but there might be a different reason. So next turn can go for Key to the Archive and 
Yeah, we could already sacrifice it to get a Paradox engine going. Also, then we wouldn't have a ton of mana artifacts to go with it. So, maybe I'll end up sacrificing something else. Solemn might be a better pick. And then get Paradox Engine. Or I could wait on getting Engine for now, just play Key to the Archive. And then keep Jerus Resolve as a way to protect Fiddlebender, or just sacrifice my Geo to get another 4 drop, like perhaps the uh, Reservoir. There's a few ways we can do this, but it seems fine. And then get Reservoir first. And then play key. And gain a life. And Time Warp seems like a good one to get. So is Demonic Tutor. So some very powerful options. At this point I don't think we'll need Ingenious Smith anymore. So ideally we can untap with Fiddlebender. If not, we can maybe just cast an Immortal Sun instead. Alright. So, Fiddlebender down. Alright. Do I have enough mana to Gilded Lotus into a Mortal Sun? We would be one mana short. So, probably go for Immortal Sun and then a one mana Spare Supplies. And then next turn we can easily redeploy Fiddlebender while drawing extra cards in the process. So Jerry's Resolve would not have saved us from a Day of Judgment, but could have been useful against a damage-based Sweeper. Alright, third and Mastery, so next turn our opponent might be able to cast Sakama, which can also destroy artifacts with the green ability. So that's potentially a problem. So, what's the plan here? I'm gonna have to cast Time Warp so we can actually use Fiddlebender to start comboing. So if I play Fiddlebender, Time Warp... I guess I'll still have a little bit of mana to work with. So I can afford to play like a Spinning Wheel. Sure. We'll take an extra turn. And then pretty sure we can figure out a way to combo off here. So step one is get a Paradox Engine in play, which requires sacrificing a 4-drop, which we already have in play. And then we've got plenty of mana artifacts to untap, make more mana, use Fiddlebender, and eventually get the statue to combo off here. And our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Burgi, a god of storytelling. So some sort of red aggro or maybe combo deck. Our hand seems fine, plenty of 2 mana ramp. So if we don't feel comfortable playing Fiddlebender on 2, we've got other options available. Magda, that's a good one. And a Mox Amber to make mana right away. So, a very explosive start from our opponent as well. Can I afford not to play Fiddlebender is a question. I think I still wait on it. Go for a Cold Steel Heart, which comes into play tapped. Save Signet for later. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. But yeah, opponents got more mana than we have. With Magda making Treasure, Mox Amber, and then Burgi's ability as well. So can play Caravan and then still play Fiddlebender. And hopefully Fiddlebender survives. No way to protect it in hand. But we can replay it at 4 mana if needed. So opponent gets in for 5. We'll leave them with two treasures. Yeah, 
And a Leyline Tyrant to play. Makes red mana with Burgi. Prospector, okay. Makes an extra mana as well. Are we gonna see some sort of storm card from the opponents? The archer dealing damage when they cast non-creature spells. Soul Guide Lantern. Another cantrip of sorts. So far, we still have our Fiddlebender, and we get to untap with him, so that's excellent. Okay, so what's the best we can do? Probably play Key, get Paradox Engine, and take it from there. Alright, let's see what we get from the Spellbook. Lightning Helix, Day of Judgment, Crows and Grip. Don't know if I need Day of Judgments. Maybe go for Lightning Helix here instead. Which I could technically cast on Burgi right now. Wall Ditch, Prophetic Prism. And then... For now I could get Paradox Engine. Although that doesn't leave enough mana to cast anything afterwards. So maybe I do just Lightning Helix, Burgi, and take it from there. What are my other options? Sacrifice Cold Steel Heart, get a Sculpting Steel, can copy the key to the Archive. That's quite powerful, but doesn't deal with Burgi. Yeah, let's just kill Burgi here. And that's an unexpected somewhat sprint to save her. Alright. So... We're at 19. Hopefully we can survive the next turn, and then... Should have the tools to combo off next turn. Warlord's Fury to draw a card. Opponent can still sacrifice Mindstone to draw. No blocks. We're down to six. And of course, can't forget about Leyline Tyrant's ability, but as long as they can't sacrifice it, it's not a problem. Okay. So now we definitely want to get Paradox Engine. And then I'll start by tapping that for mana, since we're going to sacrifice it. And then float these for mana as well, as we'll get to untap them here. And then the next step is to get Ancestral Statue and Aetherfox Reservoir, which we have enough three drops to accomplish. So I guess step one will get the reservoir. And then step two get statue. And just enough three drops to get there, although I'm sure there's other paths to victory as well here. So opponent could still sacrifice Mindstone to maybe find some interaction. Otherwise this will get there. We're making four mana with each untap from our Paradox Engine. So that's enough mana to replay Ancestral Statue over and over. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Toxtril the Corrosive, so presumably blue-black control. 
in which case this is not the best hand imaginable since resolve might not really save any damage and if we you know don't get to untap with fiddlebender untapping it an extra time is not going to help and i don't expect many early creatures that we need to swords so maybe this is a mulligan Okay, this is a little bit better. Mirror Shield gives us a way to potentially protect Fiddlebender. So that's going to be our game plan early on. And then hopefully we'll draw some lands to deploy our three drops. The land is good. Opponent has a Mind Stone to start ramping. So I won't be able to play Fiddlebender next turn yet, since it's two mana to equip. But we can play a Letter of Acceptance instead. And then hopefully we can dodge Instant Speed Removal, so we can play Fiddlebender and equip right away. But of course our opponent can try and play around that. It's gonna be a Grim Tutor for now. Can search up any card at the cost of three life and put it in their hand. Their opponent's access to 5 mana, any card in their deck essentially is going to foretell. Not enough blue mana to cast a counter spell, but they could have instant speed removal available in black. So I'm hesitant to play Fiddlebender into the black open mana, so instead we can play Key to the Archive. And not super interested in any of these. I guess Approach could be an alternate win condition. Could still get rid of it. Or maybe drop Wings of the Cosmos. Although Wings could be good if we actually get to untap with Fiddlebender. It's a close call. I think I'll still ditch the Wings here. And then we've got some powerful Six Drops to play for opponent's plan is to hang on to spot removal. And approach could also be a nice win condition. All right, opponent passes with all their mana available, did not hit their land drop. So whatever we play here is likely to get countered. So maybe we bait out with a statue since I think I would rather resolve Immortal Sun. Could technically still play Fiddlebender afterwards, but then it wouldn't be protected by Mirror Shield. Could still be worth it, I suppose. Our opponent just cycling a Shark Typhoon, so Statue resolves, and now I don't mind playing Fiddlebender. With our opponent's removal costing two more mana, kind of makes up for the commander attacks. And then we can maybe have our opponent tapped out to resolve an Immortal Sun. Alright, Narset is pretty effective at shutting down the extra card draw from Immortal Sun. But doesn't kill Fiddlebender at least. So we get to untap and uh, yeah, we kind of get to do our thing. Can sacrifice key to get Paradox Engine, play Mana Geode. Take it from there. That seems fine. Time this for mana first. And our opponent has already seen enough here. Should have the tools to eventually combo off with plenty of three drops to sacrifice, get more four drops and uh, eventually get Reservoir and Statue on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Heliot life gain deck, and Hand, of course, needs a third land, but if we do, we should be okay. Plus, I can always sacrifice Portable Hole to get some more ramp. But, of course, ideally, we can just play the Spinning Wheel, sacrifice it, get a 4-drop, 
and start ramping. This hand also potentially would have been better on the draw as opposed to on the play. Although no one drop from the opponent to get rid of, so... Play Fiddlemender and then cross our fingers that we can draw land here. Alright, perfect. And then probably better off... Well, actually, could use more white mana from the passive ability on Lantern. So I'll sacrifice a spinning wheel instead. And then which 4-drop to get? I'm leaning key to the archive here, since there's a few cards in hand I wouldn't mind discarding. To potentially get something powerful from the spellbook. Looks like Day of Judgment is maybe our best bet here. Although a regrowth could also potentially lead to some fun combos, letting us get back cards from the graveyard. And then at this point, what don't I need? Maybe a Replicator. Palladio Mirror also something we could have discarded. But the three drops are valuable to eventually get some of our powerful fours. Okay. So, could already get Paradox Engine. And then Lantern will fix for white mana if needed. Play Lantern. I guess we might as well play Void first. This can make white mana. Tap Lantern. I think I'll play Palladium Mirror, which can then get a 4 drop. Sacrifice Mirror. And... I guess getting a bit more mana is not a bad idea, so we'll get Vessel. Alright, so not bad. We've got all our combo pieces set up. And next turn we should be able to go infinite. It's gonna be a Voice of the Blusts. Turns on Heliod. Opponent does have the Ozolith to save all their counters, but I don't think that's gonna matter. Okay, so we're going to want to make sure we have enough mana, and then we want to get Reservoir and Statue. So I could also Regrowth to get back, like a spinning wheel or a key to the archive. Maybe I'll start there. Can make green mana, thanks to Chromatic Lantern. Get key. So probably want to use Fiddlebender before casting Regrowth. So let's make a bunch of white mana here. Sacrifice Lantern. Get Reservoir, maybe. Then Regrowth. Getting back Lantern, I guess. Make more mana. Play Mirror Shields. Which we can sack to get a 3-drop and eventually 4-drop, which is going to be Ancestral Statue.
So I can play Mirror Shield, sacrifice it getting Sculpting Steel to copy Firemind Vessel, and then we'll have the mana to keep looping our statue as we can sacrifice Chromatic Lantern at that point. So as long as they don't have a Swords to Plowshares, we should be good. And I imagine they would have exiled Fiddlebender if they did have it. Statue picks up himself. Plenty of mana to go around. So I'm sure we could have sequenced slightly differently to end up with a little bit more mana, maybe by getting back our 4 mana artifact earlier as opposed to Chromatic Lantern. But either way here, opponent's gonna let us fire the laser beam and deal a nice 50 damage. Sweet. Alright, so we get to see our deck combo off in pretty much every game. Now, this might lead the deck to be a bit more repetitive than other Historic Brawl decks, which may go against the spirit of the format of a singleton deck that uh, should be a different experience every time. And, of course, that's going to make the deck a little bit less interesting to play over time, but it's still a unique opportunity to play a combo deck, which there aren't very many of in the format. And, of course, even though you always get to the Paradox Engine part of the combo, the ways we get there usually are quite a bit different, and there's still plenty of room for creativity and fun, interactive gameplay. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.